Hey everyone, it's Daniel Brother Brett Barris. In this next video, we're going to be setting up SQL Server Express, SQL Server Management Studio, and SQL Server Reporting Services. We will not be using the Windows Internal Database, or WID, for our WSUS. We'll be using SQL. Okay, and I've set up some best practices here, so we're going to be uh, installing on our E drive and I'll show you how that goes. So let's log into MDT01, Control Alt Insert. There we go. We're going to create a few folders on our E drive a database, a tempdb folder, a logs folder, and then we'll create a WSUS fo content folder on the F drive. Okay, so right click on terminal, click Command Prompt. There we go. We'll wait for our flash for our uh, VMware tools. Give that a moment. I'm not sure if it came up or not. We'll copy from 12 up to 7. And paste. There we go. Okay, and it's going to wait 90 seconds just to let everything load up. And let's go to our G drive, our E drive, sorry. Let's see if we got our folders, database, logs, tempdb. And then on our F drive, we've got our WSUS folder. There we go. All right, and I'll be back in 63 seconds. Okay, and we're back. And we're going to leave this open because we're going to be using it a little bit later. But we're going to open up File Explorer. We're going to go to our G drive, share. And we're going to go to our SQL Express, go in here, and double click our setup exe. There we go. And give that a moment. And we'll go through our installation here. There we are. So we're going to click New SQL Server Standalone Installation. Let that load up. I accept. Click Next, Rule Check in Progress, click on Use Microsoft Update to check for updates. We're also going to be installing the newest cumulative update that we downloaded in video zero of the prereqs. Everything is good here. You can ignore the Windows firewall warning because we opened up all ports that we needed. Click Next. We're going to uncheck these three boxes and just have the database engine service. Okay. So we're right here. We're going to make sure that these are in the right folders. So they're all going to be on the E drive here. So change that C to an E and then click next. Okay, next. Give that a moment. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look on the collation tab and make sure that we're using SQL underscore Latin 1 underscore general underscore CP1 underscore CI underscore AS. And we look good there. So next, we have our username here, but we're going to add all SQL admins. So go ahead and type SQL admins, check names, OK, and there we go. Okay. Now we're going to go to the data directories tab right up here. Okay. Under the user database directory, okay, we're going to go down here to our E drive. We're going to type, click on database. Good. Under our user database logs directory, we're going to choose the logs directory there. Good. And then we're going to go to the temp DB tab right up here. Okay. Now, because we have four cores on our processor, I'm going to put four for the number of files there. Okay. And then I'm going to click add. And we're going to go to our eTempDB. I'm going to click on this top one and click remove so that I just have eTempDB. Okay. And down here on the log directory, I'm going to click logs, click OK, and make sure that's good. It's good to go. Okay, we're going to click next. Give that a moment. 
and let that install. And I'll come back when that is done. As you can see, it's installing pretty quickly. So I'll see you in just a few moments. Okay, and we're back and SQL has been installed. We can click close and close SQL Server Installation Center. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back one and we're gonna go to our SQL Server Express CU for cumulative update. We downloaded the newest one, which was CU12. If you're downloading in the future, you might have a newer version. Go ahead and just update the file name and double click on that. Give that a few moments. Alrighty. There we are. File check in progress. I accept. Click next. SQL Express, next. It's checking files that are in uh, use right now. That shouldn't take too long since I don't think there's many in use right now. <laughs> files in use check completed, next. Update, and there we go. So we'll wait for that to be done and I'll come back when it is. Okay, we're back and our update installed successfully. We're gonna click close, okay. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install SQL Management Studio. So let's go back here. SQL Server Management Studio, double click SSMS-setup-enu. We're gonna set this to the E drive. So there we go, tab, and then click install. And give that a few moments and I'll be back when it's done. Okay, and we're back in our SQL Server Management Studio. Setup is complete. Click Close. We're going to install the SQL Server Reporting Services. So let's go here, down to Reporting Services. Double click. Give that a moment. Install Reporting Services. I'm going to choose Evaluation Edition. Next. I accept. Next. Install Reporting Services Only. Next. We're going to change this to our E drive, tab, install, and there we are. The next thing we're going to do is install the SQL Server Report Viewer and the SQL Sys CLR types so that uh, we have both of the CLR types for 64 and 32 bit. Okay, and I'll come back when that's done. Okay, and here we are. Just click close. Go back one and go to SQL Server Report Viewer. We're going to install the 64 x 64 first. Next, I accept. Next, install. Finish. Then the 32 bit. I accept. Next, install. And Report Viewer. Next, I accept. Next, and install. Give that a moment. I'm going to go here. And I'll come back as soon as that's done. And we're back and finish. Okay. Now what we'll do is we're going to go to start. We're going to go to SQL Server 2022, and we're going to right click on SQL Server 2022 Configuration Manager. We're going to pin that to start. Then we're going to go down here to SQL Server Tools 20, and SQL Server Management Studio, we'll right click that, pin that also to start. And we're going to open SQL Server Management Studio. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to set the minimum and maximum memory that SQL will use. The minimum, of course, we're going to set to 4 gigabytes. And the maximum, we're going to do 6144. And if you get your calculator out and you go 8192 minus 2048 is 6144. So we leave 2 gigs for the operating system. Okay. So there we go. Down here where it says encryption, we're going to click here and click optional and then click connect. Right click SQL Server Express, click properties, 
click on memory and here we go 4096 and maximum is 6144 okay click OK and just close SQL Server Management Studio now what we'll do is we're gonna go here to our E Drive okay we're gonna open up tempdb click continue and you'll see our four files okay and then we'll go to the log logs folder and you should see the temp log folder there we go one log file and we're good now we're gonna go to start again and this time we're gonna click on SQL Server Con Configuration Manager okay we're gonna go to SQL Server Network Configuration so double click on that double click on protocols for SQL Express and double click on TCP IP under listen all we're gonna drop down no we're gonna IP address we're gonna click enabled on IP 1 which is our IP version 6 and IP version 4 yes enabled and OK OK and we're good there go to SQL Server Services we're gonna click then right click our SQL Express service that's already running we're just gonna restart it so that those settings we just changed take effect okay so we're right here restart give that a moment stopping service starting service and there we go we're gonna close SQL configuration manager We'll close this window here, and as you can see, we're going to set our SQL service to restart three times when it reaches the servicing pipes uh, timeout. Same thing with the SQL telemetry and SQL server reporting services. Okay, so we'll go from 151 up to 138, and it will restart our machine. Okay. There we go. And that's it for SQL. So I'll see you in the next video.